Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Lesson for Sunday, September 5th, 2021. We are beginning a new unit for the fall quarter, Unit 1, Lesson 1. Unit 1 is entitled, God's People Offer Praise. God's People Offer Praise. From the Faith Pathway Adult Quarterly, our lesson title, again, this is Lesson 1, is Celebrating with Song. Celebrating with Song. Our devotional reading is taken from Psalm 105, 1 to 3, and verses 37 to 45. Background scripture is Exodus chapter 14, verse 1 through chapter 15, verse 21. And our printed passage or lesson text is Exodus chapter 15, verses 11 to 21. Our key verse from the King James is Exodus 15, 11, which reads, Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Lesson aims from the quarterly or number one, explore why and how Moses and Miriam praised God. Number two, reflect on the actions of God that are celebrated through music, dance, and words. And number three, celebrate God's faithfulness with joy. This lesson uh, commentary, the Faith Pathway Adult Quarterly, has three divisions after the introduction. The first division is entitled, The Deeds of God, and that's covered between Exodus 15, verses 11 and 13. The second is, The Dreading of Our God, that's covered between chapter 15 verses 14 to 16 and the third is the dwelling of our God and that's covered between Exodus 15 verses 17 and 21 from the standard commentary the lesson title is praise with music praise with music and very quickly additional aims are number one describe the events that caused the Israelites to burst into spontaneous praise. Number two, explain how the events fit on a timeline of God's continued care for Israel. And number three, list attributes and or actions of God today that parallel those in the text. Amen. Uh, as I mentioned, the Unit one title is God's People Offer Praise. We are actually going to be studying uh, how God's people praise God throughout this quarter. Uh, unit two is entitled God, uh, or rather, Called to Praise God. Unit three is entitled Visions of Praise. So we are going to be studying uh, how God's people in the Bible, praise the Lord. Uh, hopefully, uh, with the aim of uh, making our own praise uh, more uh, effective, uh, more uh, spontaneous, uh, and of course, um, more frequent. So we're going to give a little background uh, and then uh, have a brief word of prayer and get into our lesson text verse by verse. Uh, this is Deacon Barry Taylor, by the way, and uh, those of you who are familiar with the Old Testament, and specifically uh, Exodus, uh, know that uh, the children of Israel, uh, that is, uh, Jacob's descendants, uh, were brought down into Egypt during the uh, famine, a great famine uh, that and this, we, we read about this going back in the latter uh, chapters of Genesis, uh, where Joseph uh, had been made the prime minister, second only in authority to Pharaoh, and uh, 
basically uh, controlled uh, all commerce and, and basically uh, everything else, the administrative duties throughout it, uh, Egypt, brought his family down uh, to preserve life, to prevent them from starving during the seven years of famine. There were seven years of, of plenty before and then seven years of famine. Anyway, fast forward uh, over 400 years and uh, the descendants of Jacob or Israel have multiplied into uh, millions and uh, a king has arisen or Pharaoh has arisen that did not know Joseph and he has been uh, concerned about how the children of Israel were multiplying and fearful that they might become enemies and or join forces with their enemies and uh, attack them and overthrow them. So he uh, first uh, has uh, the uh, uh, decrees that all the male children be uh, be killed uh, to stop the the birth uh, of the, the increasing in the population of the Israelites or the Hebrews and they have been made slaves they've been made bond slaves and of course uh, God has uh, called Moses after uh, he was raised by Pharaoh's daughter uh, in Pharaoh's palace uh, to deliver his people however uh, we know that Moses first spent 40 years in the wilderness after killing an Egyptian overseer, taskmaster, and then um, he met God at the burning bush. God sent him to deliver his people, and God has, by mighty works, through plagues, ten plagues on Egypt, the final one being uh, him causing the death of the firstborn of all the Egyptians. The Israelites, or Hebrews, were spared uh, if they followed, because they followed uh, God's instruction to put blood, the blood of a, a lamb firstborn uh, on the doorposts and lentils of their homes. Anyway, so all that's happened. The people, finally Pharaoh relents, lets the children of Israel go. Uh, they march out into the wilderness under the leadership of uh, Moses. And God is directing Moses and actually directs them to the brink of the Red Sea. Uh, he then hardens Pharaoh's heart. Uh, in other words, he enables Pharaoh to do what Pharaoh really wants to do, uh, and that is to go back and uh, recapture the slaves and bring them back to Egypt in bondage. Uh, so Pharaoh uh, and his army uh, pursue the Israelites. Uh, God places a pillar of fire behind them to protect them uh, while uh, they are up against the river, I mean the, the sea rather, the Red Sea. And then God tells Moses, stretch out your staff, tell the children to go forward. He parts the Red Sea. Children of Israel go through the Red Sea on dry land. And then Pharaoh's armies pursue uh, down into the Red Sea in their chariots. They have some 600 or more chariots. Uh, their captains and, and their horsemen, and they are in hot pursuit of the Israelites. Once they get into the midst of the sea, uh, God instructs Moses again to stretch out his staff and bring the water back. The water returns and drowns the Egyptian army. And the children of Israel are on the other side of the Red Sea, and they see the dead bodies of the soldiers and the horses wash up on the seashore. And they uh, are so gracious of what God has done, uh, not only through the ten plagues, which caused uh, Pharaohs uh, to finally relent and release the children of Israel, but also in this, uh, this, uh, this astounding, amazing feat of power uh, displayed on their enemies uh, uh, that would pursue them. And Moses tells them, before he parts the Red Sea to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The Egyptians that you see today, you will see no more. And they move forward in faith into the midst of the sea. On the other side, they break out in spontaneous praise of God's power uh, and his mercy in delivering them from their enemy. So that is what uh, this uh, lesson is all about, this spontaneous praise. And this is one of uh, the... Uh, 
three songs of Moses that we are aware of. There's also one uh, we read about, we can read in, in uh, Deuteronomy 32 and Psalm 90, which was a song and prayer. Um, and uh, Miriam chimes in, uh, and other uh, women uh, follow her lead uh, at the end of the uh, song, and and adds some <clears throat> some music accompanies the song with some music and uh, uh, re re recanting, if you will, of uh, some of the uh, verses and then some dancing. So with that, Father, we do thank and praise you for uh, another opportunity to study your precious word. We thank you for keeping us in your loving care always, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you would open our, our understanding, Lord, of, of uh, your word and, and what you intend for us to get out of it, Lord. How you uh, remind us, Lord, how you are to delight in our praise, Lord, and help remind us of how praiseworthy you are, Lord, that you Give us all things, Lord, uh, to enjoy that we are nothing, we have nothing, and we can do nothing apart from you, Lord. We thank you for every good and every perfect gift. And we ask your blessings upon all the hearers, uh, all the families represented. And we ask as we uh, understand your word that our faith would be increased and that our obedience, Lord, certainly when it comes to spontaneous and sincere praise, be increased. In Jesus' name. So we're going to try to follow um, the Faith Pathway Adult Quarterly lesson here um, as far as uh, the divisions are concerned, and we will uh, back up and have some verse by verse after we read each passage, the passage of each division. So the first division, again, was the deeds of God covered between Exodus 15 verses 11 and 13 and I'm going to read um, those verses from the NIV who among the gods is like you Lord who is like you majestic in holiness awesome in glory working wonders you stretched out your right hand and the earth swallowed your enemies in your unfailing love you will lead the people you have redeemed. In your strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. Now backing up to verse 1 again. Who among the gods is like you, Lord? It's a question, a rhetorical question. That means a question that has an obvious answer. Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders? So Moses is asking a rhetorical question again, a question that needs no answer, that has an obvious answer. And obviously Moses knows that there are no other gods, real, true gods, but he is referring uh, perhaps to the gods of Egypt, which he is probably pretty familiar with, or the idols uh, that uh, represented uh, false gods. And there were hundreds of them. I know that... Uh, Teachers uh, <clears throat> tend to uh, uh, suggest that the ten plagues uh, that the Lord brought upon Egypt represented the ten gods, but there were Egypt actually had hundreds of gods. Certainly, they were directed at several of those gods. Uh, for example, when God uh, brought darkness upon all of Egypt, and not and and while light it was still light in Goshen. Uh, that was certainly uh, to challenge the sun god, Ra. Okay, we see that in Exodus chapter 10, verses 21 to 23. And other, they had the uh, other gods that God targeted with uh, the plagues. But as I said, they had hundreds of gods, and Moses is simply making a rhetorical, a rhetorical uh, question or asking a rhetorical question. There is no god like the, uh, the God, the God in whom he is praising, or that he is praising right now. And he says, majestic in holiness. Uh, and the King James says, glorious in holiness. God's holiness speaks of his uniqueness, his 
otherness. He is unique from everything, from all creation. Um, all idols are uh, fabrications of, of God, of man's mind, and actually resemble man or beast. And of course, uh, they are attributed the character and attributes of man and not of the unique and only holy God. And we are called to be holy as God is holy. Obviously, we cannot share or we cannot, um, we don't have the same divine attributes as God, but to the extent we can be holy or unique and reflect God, his character in this world, God wants us to be that. He wants us to be holy even as he is holy. And it's the verse that says he is awesome in glory. His um, his awesome power that was displayed and his glory speaks to his uh majesty and his worthiness to be praised and then he also goes on to say working wonders again the wonders or the miraculous displays of his power again they are remembering certainly the ten plagues but more recently the awesome display of power in parting the Red Sea allowing the perhaps two to three million uh, uh, Hebrews to or Jews uh, uh, sorry, Israelites to pass over in the midst of the sea on dry land and then consuming the Egyptian soldiers. Verse 2, you stretched, you stretch out your right hand and the earth swallows your enemy. The right hand of God symbolized his awesome power. It typically does throughout the Bible, uh, his great power to deliver his people. And we see many examples of that throughout the, throughout the Bible, including Psalm 17, 7, 39, 10. And, and certainly this is something to be celebrated. This is a victory over the enemies of Israel that uh, God has, has brought about by his awesome power. And he says, the earth swallows your enemies. Now, one of the commentators um, <clears throat> makes a distinction between the sea swallowing and earth as in soil swallowing. But I believe the sea being part of the earth uh, is what is referred to here. And it swallows up the enemies. Now, there's a question about whether uh, we uh, should rejoice in God's victory over our enemies uh, as the as Moses is doing in this psalm and and while um, the rejoicing or the praising of God for victory over their enemies was truly uh, spontaneous again on the part of Moses and then Miriam and others um, uh, we uh, as Christians uh, I believe I have every right to rejoice over God's uh, victory over evil, those um, uh, evil systems, world systems. Uh, we, we are told to love, however, our enemies. If we look at uh, Psalm, I'm sorry, Proverbs chapter 25, verses 21 and 22, it reads, if your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat, and if he is thirsty, give him water to drink, for so, for so you will heap coals of fire on his head, and the Lord will reward you. We know the Lord Jesus repeats this in Matthew uh, chapter 5, verses, beginning at verse 43. So we are uh, certainly to uh, praise God when he destroys the, the evil works of men and evil systems, we are to pray for those who perpetrate the evil, however, and we are to, um, to bless them and not curse them. Verse 13, in your unfailing love, you will lead the people you have redeemed. In your strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. Now, the King James version of that uh, is really in the past tense 
me read that again in the King James. Thou in the, thy mercy hast led forth the people which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation. So it speaks of what God is going to do as if he had already done it. And certainly uh, we can only uh, speak of things that God would, will do as if they'd already been done because of the certainty uh, that God will do what he promises to do. And he has told way back to Abraham how he's going to deliver the people to the prom his descendants and settle them in the promised land, the land of Canaan. And so the redeemed people, of course, are the Hebrews. Uh, they are the delivered people. Delivered. Uh, uh, our word salvation is uh, derived from the word which means deliverance. Spiritual salvation, we know what that is, deliverance from sin, from the, from the power, from the presence, I mean from the penalty, the power, and ultimately from the very presence of sin. But in this case, it is a physical deliverance from Pharaoh and the Egyptian army. And he said uh, he's guided them, he is going to guide them in their trek to the promised land. Now, at this point, Moses doesn't know it's going to be a 40-year trek because of the children's lack of faith. But uh, nonetheless, he knows that God is ultimately going to deliver them to the holy habitation. And that, uh, in this context, is the land of Canaan. And God told them that he would dwell with them uh, in uh, that land. And he, he, he would choose a place uh, to place his name. And, that, of course, that was the temple. While he was with them, his presence was represented by the tabernacle in the wilderness. And, of course, a uh, pillar of fire and a cloud by day, a pillow of fire by night. So let's move into the second division here, which is entitled The Dreading of Our God. And that's covered between Exodus chapter 15, verses 14 to 16. And it reads again from the NIV, The nations will hear and tremble. Anguish will grip the people of Philistia. The chief of of Edom will be terrified. The leaders of Moab will be seized with trembling. The people of Canaan will melt away. Terror and dread will fall on them. By the power of your arm, they will be as still as stone until your people pass by, Lord, until the people you brought, you bought, rather, pass by. The people you purchased pass by. So the emphasis in the psalm now changes, uh, going back to verse 14, uh, the people, the nations, it says, King James says, people will hear and tremble, anguish will grip the people of Philistia. So emphasis changes from uh, how God protects Israel to how others will respond when they hear of his power and mighty acts. Um, and uh, it says, <clears throat> the King James uses the word sorrow shall take uh, shall take hold of them. Uh, the NIV says anguish, but it, it basically is derived, this word sorrow, also anguish, is derived from a word that describes the pain of childbirth. Uh, same one used in Psalm 48, 6, Jeremiah 22, 23. And it really uh, reflects uh, the magnitude of the acuteness of the pain of the inhabitants of Philistia or Palestine, Palestina or Palestine. And uh, elsewhere, you know, people uh, uh, will, that <clears throat> will hear of what God has done in Egypt and certainly the parting of the Red Sea will be uh, fearful of the people of Israel because they know uh, they have a mighty God who is protecting them, who is fighting for them. Verse 15 goes on to say, the chiefs of Edom will be terrified, the leaders of Moab will be seized with trembling, 
and the people of Canaan will melt away. Now, for those uh, <clears throat> Bible students, scholars out there, we know you know that the Edom, of course, were the people derived from Esau, Jacob's brother, and uh, they were they were known as the Edomites, and they refused to let the Israelites pass through their land. We see that in Numbers chapter 20, um, 21 and 21, 4. Uh, and this was evidence of their fear of of the uh, the dukes, the King James says, but the chiefs uh, that led the people uh, of the Israelites, or the uh, as they uh, were <coughs> in progress to the land that God promised to them. The the mighty men of Moab will tremble. Uh, also, you scholars know that the Moabites uh, were descendant from. Moab, who was, of course, um, a, uh, a uh, son of Lot by his older daughter. We read that in Genesis 19, 36 to 37. Uh, and uh, the Israelites were, well, let me say, their, um, their dwelling was, was uh, east of the Dead Sea. And, uh, and, and they were also going to be very fearful of the children of Israel as they came through the wilderness to possess their inheritance. Um, and then the last part of that verse, verse 15, just says the, the inhabitants of Canaan shall melt away. Those were all the other folk, the, all the, the Bites, the Jebusites, the, the Hivites, the Hittites, and all the other uh, inhabitants of Canaan would hear about what God had done on behalf of the Israelites uh, in Egypt and certainly how he had delivered them through the Red Sea. Uh, in fact, um, we uh, in Joshua, I'm sorry, uh, uh, in Numbers chapter 14, this is uh, some 40 years later, uh, Joshua sent two spies and to spy out Jericho. See that in Joshua 2, 1. And Rahab, a Canaanite woman, uh, reported that uh, the land was terrified of Israel. And one of the reasons that she cited was because they had heard of Israel crossing the Red Sea. Uh, we read that in uh, Numbers 2, I'm sorry, uh, Joshua 2, 9 to 12 and verse 24. So the people had heard about uh, this people who had a powerful God protecting them. And Moses is praising God for what he is yet to do, you know, because uh, he knows that God is going to be with them. He's going to be their protector. And, uh, and, and one of the reasons that you recall that God did his mighty uh, acts uh, in Egypt was so that First of all, Pharaoh would know that he was God, but also that the world would know that he was God. In verse 16, he says, So terror and dread will fall on them by the power of your arm. Again, this is the representing his, his, his mighty power, the right arm. They will be as still as stones or stone statues until your people pass by, until the people you bought pass by, until the people you purchased, the people you redeemed from slavery, okay, the Lord. Now, they were redeemed physically. Uh, we Christians are redeemed spiritually. Uh, we, are, we are purchased by the blood of, of the Lord Jesus from bondage to sin. They were redeemed or purchased from bondage to slavery, physical slavery in Egypt. Now, I, I should add, um, you know, in, in those days, uh, there were many nomadic people that, that uh, roamed uh, the wilderness, through the wilderness, and probably perhaps through Canaan. Um, I'm sure not as large as this uh, congregation uh, of uh, two, two and a half million or more. Uh, 
and, and they were not feared. I mean, they were uh, not feared by the inhabitants of the land as uh, the Israelites were, again, because of the, the word that had come via perhaps merchants or whoever to these uh, countries or these uh, inhabitants of Canaan about the miraculous works that the Lord had done on behalf of the Israelites in, in Egypt. So uh, what is Moses doing here? Moses is celebrating God's greatness. Uh, again, his, his power is represented by his arm. It's a metaphor uh, for his, 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 his greatness and the power that he uh, displayed in delivering them and working on behalf of his chosen people. And now uh, what he's uh, saying here is that there's not going to be <clears throat> any resistance because of the fear of the God that works on behalf of his people. Now we know that they did encounter uh, some uh, uh, resistance, but God <laughs> fought for them. God went ahead of them. God actually gave them victory after victory until they came to the uh, east side of the the River Jordan, and, and obviously we know once they crossed over, he gave them the first victory of Jericho um, in a miraculous way. And let me let me rephrase, uh, you know, the people there of the lands would offer some resistance to uh, the Israelites, but their resistance would be ineffective, uh, as ineffective as if they were stone statues, because again, the Lord um, worked or fought for them, and the Lord um, uh, again had had struck fear in their hearts even before the Israelites approached their lands. And and of course, uh, God had purchased His people. Uh, the uh, and He and He had declared, uh, actually, He will. Uh, that the firstborn of the animals and humans were his with uh, provisions uh, for redeeming them. Actually, he's done that. Let me go back to Exodus 13, read between uh, verses 11 and 15. So uh, all the people were his, uh, and he uh, had declared that the firstborn were offered to him and uh, uh, and all were redeemed on, on behalf. They were representative of his redemption for all of them. So let's move into the third division, which is entitled in the quarterly, The Dwelling of Our God. And that's covered between Exodus chapter 15, verses 17 and 21. And it reads, you will bring them in and plant them on the mountain of your inheritance. The place, Lord, you made for your dwelling, the sanctuary, Lord, your hands established. Verse 18, the Lord reigns forever and ever. When Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought the waters over the sea back over them. But the Israelites walked through the sea on dry ground. Then Miriam, the prophetess, this is verse 20, Miriam, the prophet, the prophetess, Aaron's sister, should read prophetess, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women followed her with timbrel and dancing. Miriam sang to them, sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted, both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. So let's back up to 17 again. It says, you will bring them in and plant them on the mountain of your inheritance, the place, Lord, you made for your dwelling, the sanctuary, Lord, your hands have established. Now, Moses is talking about uh, God settling the people, his people, in their promised land. This is the land he promised Abraham. Uh, and... Uh, and in time, uh, this is going to refer to the Mount Zion, where actually God placed, um, uh, uh, caused
caused the temple to be constructed and the sanctuary and the holy and holy of holies, which is where he met the people and represented that represented his very presence where the Ark of the Covenant was and the mercy seat. Um, now, verse 18 says, Lord, the Lord reigns forever and ever. Certainly the Lord uh, has uh, uh, no beginning, <laughs> he has no end, and he is the sovereign, uh, that is the, uh, the ruling power or authority over all over all creation, over things visible and invisible. Uh, and we read about that throughout the, uh, the scriptures, Old Testament uh, and New Testament. Verse 19 reads, When Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought the waters of the sea back over them, but the Israelites walk through the sea on dry ground. What, what is Moses doing here? Rose, Moses is reciting what God has done. Uh, and I think that when we offer praise to God, uh, we need to be specific uh, in, in, in recognizing the blessing. Psalm 103 tells us to forget not all of his benefits. And, and it, it can mean to forget not the multitude of his benefits or not to forget specific benefits uh, uh, and, the, and or the benefits in particular or blessings in particular and I, I know it's easy for us to, to thank God I do every morning for all of his blessings but as God uh, blesses you in particular ways and, and brings those uh, uh, the recognition of those blessings to your mind you need to thank him then uh, and then thank him later for having blessed you, having brought you through this trial or that trial, and for his faithfulness to deliver. So Moses is reciting his specific acts, how he brought uh, Pharaoh's horses and chariots. He, he, he allowed Pharaoh uh, to do what he really wanted to do, what his heart was inclined to do. God just let him do what he willed to do. Uh, and it, it's referred to as a hardening of his heart, but Pharaoh's heart was intent on recapturing the Hebrews and bringing them back as slaves, and God just allowed him to do what he really wanted to do, uh, even though he knew he was fighting against an almighty God. So he went. they went into the sea, as we uh, read, and if you go back up, uh, a few verses. In fact, uh, earlier in the chapter, in the last chapter, you, you read how God told Moses to stretch out his arm after he got to the other side of the sea, stretch out the rod rather, and bring the water back. And of course, all the horses and chariots were drowned. And we know in the process, God uh, uh, caused the chariot wheels to come off, and he, he really frustrated the uh, army that was trying to reach the Israelites before they reached the other side. Now they're on dry ground while the water is coming back in full strength on them. And so again, uh, uh, I don't believe that God wants us to delight in uh, his victory over our enemies, the personages of our enemies, but certainly over evil systems, over the devices of men. Uh, over uh, the world system again. God, uh, when uh, the Gospel of John speaks of God so loving the world in uh, John 3, 16, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He is not talking about the world system. He is talking about the people, the people of the world. And then the last couple of verses, uh, we, we see that Miriam the prophetess, and she was a prophet. In fact, Miriam and her brother Aaron were also a prophet. She was a prophetess, and he was said to be a prophet. We can see that in Exodus uh, 7 and 1, and Deuteronomy 18 and 15. Uh, and uh, she... Uh, was one of several women. She and several women. Well, let me let me read the verse. Uh, verse twenty says, "Then Miriam the prophetess should read in the NIV as well as the King James, Aaron's sister, 
took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women followed her with timbrels and dancing. Now again, uh, she is a, a prophetess, even though uh, she misuses that that office. Uh, we know in one instant uh, when she challenged Moses' authority and was stricken with leprosy for a time, for a period. Um, but and she's referred to as the uh, sister of Aaron. Of course, we know Aaron was the older brother or brother of uh, Moses. Uh, Miriam is believed to be older than um, than uh, Moses. In fact, we know that she was because she was the one that was instructed by her mother to follow the um, the uh, basket uh, that Moses was put in when he was put in the Nile to see where it went. And she, of course, came back, reported to her mother that Pharaoh's daughter had recovered uh, Moses from the water. Uh, and um, and then she asked <laughs> Pharaoh's daughter, hey, do you, you need a Hebrew nurse? And uh, you know how that ended up. She ended up taking Moses back to uh, her mother uh, for weaning. Now, uh, so why is Moses referring to her as Aaron's sister and not his own? Uh, well, perhaps because uh, Moses and Aaron, I'm sorry, Aaron and Miriam grew up in the same household uh, and uh, Moses probably did not have much access to that household when he was growing up uh, in Pharaoh's household uh, and so there was perhaps a closer kinship if you will because they, they grew up in the same household but we don't know for sure, don't know for sure why he refers to her as Aaron's sister but we know she was also his sister, we see that elsewhere in the scriptures. And she took a timbrel. This timbrel is referred to as a small drum. Uh, one of the commentators says it's a tambourine. Uh, so it was something between, the, and a, I guess a tambourine is a small drum of sorts. So uh, she took it in her hand and she is intending to accompany uh, Moses. Uh, Moses is um, singing the song, if you will, without music, uh, a cappello. And, uh, so she takes the tim timbrel and all the women follow her and they begin to dance. They are celebrating uh, God's victory over their enemies. They are uh, praising uh, the Lord uh, through song and spontaneous dance. We know, <clears throat> you recall when, Mo uh, when David was finally bringing the ark into Jerusalem, how he danced before the Lord, uh, and how Michael, his wife, was uh, embarrassed by that. But, but it was a spontaneous expression of joy, great joy, and praising of the Lord. And that is what the Lord wants from us. I mean, uh, I, we, we, uh, he doesn't want contrived uh, praise. He wants sincere <clears throat> and spontaneous praise. Uh, I got a text from my uh, <clears throat> my granddaughter just this morning. Uh, she's down in uh, Atlanta at uh, Spelman in her senior year there, praise God. And she was on her way to class and she just broke out in a spontaneous dance. I mean, just praising the Lord. The Lord has got his hand on her and is going to do something, I believe, mighty through her. And People looked at her strange, and she said, you know, hey, uh, she wasn't embarrassed. Uh, she just was happy, and she was praising the Lord, and she, uh, she was a little late for uh, like her class, but uh, for a good reason, she, she was praising the Lord. But anyway, that's what the Lord wants, spontaneous, uh, genuine praise for what he's done, for who he is, and for his great and precious promises, all of which are yea and amen. Then finally, verse 21 says, Miriam sang to them, sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. So Miriam uh, exalts, or speaks of the Lord uh, being highly exalted, and she implores the women that are following her to sing along with her. And this is believed to be uh, uh, what's called an antiphonal uh, 
rendition uh, or call and response type singing. She is giving, uh, she's actually singing a verse, if you will, and the uh, women are either repeating that verse or responding, the Lord is highly exalted or something related to what she has said. So she's saying, sing again um, to the Lord, and Lord is all caps in, in your Bible, which means Jehovah, the self-existent one, uh, for he is highly exalted. He is exalted above all. Uh, he's lifted up. He's higher than all. And then she talks about his character, who he is, and then what he's done. Okay, why? Both horse and driver, or uh, chariot driver, if you will, uh, he has hurled into the midst of the sea. It is as if God had hurled them into the sea. Of course, we know they they went in of their own volition with evil intentions, and God uh, caused again the sea to swallow them up. Now, you know, in, in summary or in conclusion, um, we want to um, be reminded of uh, Psalm 98, verse 1, which reads, O sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained him the victory. Verse 2 says, The Lord has made known his salvation, his righteousness he has revealed in the sight of the nation. So we are to praise God for who he is and what he has done in our lives personally and certainly what he has done for the world. Um, one of the commentators uh, speaks of uh, um, the, the song, a popular song, Amazing Grace, gospel song, Amazing Grace. Many of you know the background of that song, and it helps to know the background that inspired the song, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Um, once was lost, but now I'm found blind, but now I see. And that song moves me in a certain way. We used to sing that uh, every Sunday. That was uh, kind of our our theme hymn, and uh, and I grew up uh, singing that. Uh, but we want to to be careful. Uh, when I say be careful, be deliberate in praising God. Certainly, we can do uh, both be spontaneous and deliberate. And, and when I say deliberate, we want to offer our praises on a frequent basis as we recognize God's blessings. Uh, and even in the dark, you know, when uh, uh, we we can't see God's moving, uh, moving us, we can't see his movement, if you will, in our lives in a particular circumstance, we are to praise him. You know, uh, uh, James says we are to count it all joy when we fall into different trials and, and temptations, knowing this, that the trying of our faith worketh patience. But we are even to let uh, the tribulations uh, uh, work patience in our, in our lives. So we hope and pray that uh, we have gotten uh, maybe a bit more inspiration uh, to praise the Lord from our lesson, from our study today. Uh, I certainly am going to be more deliberate and observant of God's many blessings and 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 purposeful in the in praising him uh, for his seen and unseen blessings but certainly uh, as I see uh, the specific blessings to praise him for that so Lord we do thank and praise you again for another opportunity to study your precious word and we praise you Lord for your goodness uh, for all that you've done on our behalf Lord each and every uh, year every month every week every day every hour of our lives lord we thank you for keeping us in your loving care certainly we thank you for our salvation we thank you that our names are written in the lamb's book of life and we thank you for the many spiritual and material blessings with which you've blessed us so i ask your continued blessings upon all who hear my voice in jesus name
Amen.